Welcome back to Up With Crim. Great to have you with us here. Now this week, Governor Jay Inslee eased restrictions for counties in phase two and three, and that impacts restaurant, bars, movie theaters, and libraries. This morning, we are welcoming Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward to the show. Good morning, Mayor. It's uh, great to have you here with us. We really appreciate you getting up this early. Thank you. Good to be with you guys. Yeah, so you have been asked uh, for some of these changes for months. Now, you've been working with Governor Inslee's office. Will this help repair what Spokane's economy lost during the pandemic? You know, it's, it's a nice next step for a lot of our businesses, um, which I'm in contact with on a regular basis. But, you know, I'm hearing from them, and it's pretty clear that it's, we need more. So allowing our restaurants and bars to serve one hour later and add one more chair to the table, um, you know, it just doesn't go far enough. And so um, we're going to continue to work with the governor through our business associations, especially hospitality, because so many of our jobs, uh, especially downtown, are hospitality-related. And those are the jobs and businesses that have been impacted most heavily. So we'll continue to um, advocate to the governor some best practices so that we can expand space inside. Because they're really worried that, you know, once this nice weather, I think today is the last day of, of really great uh, fall weather, once they can't use that outdoor capacity that we've been able to increase for them through the city, they're not going to have enough business to stay open. And so that's a big concern. Mayor Woodward, I want to ask you, what is it going to take to get us to phase three? A lot of people have been asking that question because it seems like the conversation stopped about moving phases. What do you think it will take to get us to phase three? Well, we have heard some, uh, there is some dialogue in the governor's office about if we can't even get to phase three, maybe we get to a 2.5, but I think that they're still working on what that looks like. But from a lot of the businesses that I'm hearing, even a phase three at this point, which would, for example, for restaurants, offer 75% um, of their business inside, still isn't enough. They need to be fully open. Our libraries right now are working to get to that 25% um, customers, and then the theaters at 25%. From what I understand, Regal Theaters has already said that it won't open, but AMC, which is downtown in a an anchor um, business for our River Park, uh, um, River Park Square. A lot of those businesses rely on the foot traffic that those theaters provide. And 25%, I don't know if that's going to be enough foot traffic for them. And as we look ahead to the future, do you think the governor will be changing any requirements that will get us to phase three? Do you think that that is even a discussion that's being held? We, we, we continue that discussion all the time. We never let that discussion die. But one thing I will tell you is that the governor has been responsive to the industries that have been in close contact with him. The industries that are coming up with some of their own protocols and best practices have a better chance of being able to move forward or at least have the guidelines um, tweaked so that they can increase business. And that seems to to be the best way moving forward. So I know I've, I've been in contact with Hospitality Association, the Spokane chapter, and the Safe 509 group, which is a group of businesses, restaurants that have come together to advocate um, just to be able to stay open and to, get to expand and, and to have conversations with them so that they can come up with those best practices to suggest to the governor and be proactive in keeping their businesses open. Mayor Woodward, I also want to ask, you know, when we started reopening earlier this summer, we saw a spike in cases. When you're looking at the numbers, how do you balance reopening while also making sure that our community stays safe and doesn't put us uh, further back if we see cases spike? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, we knew that when we opened up to phase two back um, in May, at the end of May, that we were likely going to see an increase in cases. And we did, and we continue to see uh, it, in, and we have over the last three months as we've been in phase two now for three months. Um, as the cases increase, that's not the only metric, though, that we need to look at because there are a lot of people who, who 99%, I think it's 99.9% .9 are surviving uh, in most categories demographics this virus. What we need to do is protect those that we know are most vulnerable. 
And those are our elderly citizens who live in congregate living facilities. So as we've learned more about this virus, we know how, how to respond to it better. But for, the, for most people, the vast majority, if they get it, they will survive and they'll be okay. We need to protect those who are vulnerable. And then look at the other metrics, hospitalization and ICU capacity. That's why we shut down, was to make sure that our ICUs and our hospitals weren't overburdened. And they have never been since the beginning of COVID. So I think those are some of the things we need to remember as well. But the, li- but the health of our community is also our economy. And we have livelihoods. People's livelihoods are on the line as well if we can't expand and open more. All right, Mayor Woodward, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this morning. And of course, we'll be checking back with you, of course, as we move along in the reopening process this morning. So thanks again for being here on Up With Crab. You bet. Good to be with you. All right, we'll be right back. Andy, you know what I love about this time? So much, Mayor Woodward. You bet. Thank you, guys. Have Mayor a great Woodward, uh, weekend. Before you go, yeah. should we try this real quick? Sure. <laughs> hey, uh, PC, could you guys record on this? Uh, Nicole, or I mean, I'm sorry, Jen, do you want to explain to Mayor Woodward what we're doing? Sure. This is totally unrelated to this interview. Our web team's working on a new project where we're asking interviewees um, what their favorite day in Spokane looks like. Or so, favorite we, day or. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So um, I'm not sure how it will end up looking, but uh, we're proposing that question to uh, all of our interviewees. So what is your perfect day in Spokane? Wow. Um, I would say any day that my children, who are now grown, are back in town to visit uh, when we're not in COVID uh, and it's 80 degrees outside. But other than that, I would say um, it begins with me sleeping in. <laughs> Uh, walking in my neighborhood. I live in a very walkable neighborhood that I absolutely love. Um, I would be the tour guide for my kids when they're in town because when they're here, I always take them to the, the newest and the coolest places. But our favorite is we would have breakfast at uh, Indaba downtown for their kimchi avocado toast, which is like amazing. Um, and then we would probably go downtown shopping. I would fast forward two years and we'd be in Riverfront Park enjoying that zip line that we're working really hard to put in the park, which is so cool. I would say lunch at one of our awesome food trucks, uh, probably a nap because we'd be tired. And then we'd go somewhere and have dinner al fresco because we have so many wonderful restaurants that have great views and provide a wonderful dining experience outside. So we're a foodie family and <laughs> anything that, that centers around food, I would say. Uh, you're screaming our language it's right saying, now. Naps Jen and, and I are hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was wonderful. That's all we had for you. So thanks so much okay. for obliging us and, and, and helping us out with that. We appreciate it. You bet. Have a good rest of your show.